Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you know me at all, you know I love me some free tools. And this one is another great tool. It's amazing just how many options we have out there. And this one is called Shader Ed. Now this one is what it sounds like. It's an editor for creating shaders. So if you want to get started dealing with shaders, what it allows you to do is kind of enter your code, enter the objects you need, set up some variables that go in, and see a real-time preview of your shader in action. We've got a couple of these out there right now. This one will run on GLSL and HLSL, and the perhaps the coolest part is, it is again completely free. So let's start off with some eye candy. And here you can see a shader in action. We are currently in performance mode, so you can see it running as fast as possible, taking up pretty much as much of the screen as possible. Now I'm gonna switch back here. We'll go to the window and we will turn performance mode off. And then you're kind of back into the normal editing environment. So it's pretty straightforward. You have your shader over here, you can double click it, and here I'll show you the full process. So we'll get rid of those things. So if I pick the shader, you see here the code that is actually feeding the shader, I could go ahead and make a small change to it. I got no idea what I'm breaking or what this thing does or what this value does, no idea. But I'm gonna go ahead and change it to 42 just because I can. So we'll save that out. As soon as that is saved, it will kick off the compilation process. It compiled the shader and made whatever changes that did. So you can see you've got a very interactive process. It will automatically compile those shaders and show you the end result. Another thing you may notice is that the user interface is very customizable. We can uh, dock, move things around. We can share them together. We can tab them side by side if we so wished, or we can get rid of something completely. So that is essentially the basics of the user interface. Now the cool thing on top of this, in addition to uh, shaders and then the objects that work on said shaders or, your, or things like uh, MP3s or data files or whatever, Whatever would show up under objects. You've also got the ability to create new shaders from scratch. We can also come over here and we can manually cause a rebuild. Uh, but we can also create uh, passes, textures, cube maps, audio, and render textures. Uh, we can uh, go into file and open up. And when you download this, it actually ships with, so this is inside the shader ed directory. You will notice here there are a number of different shaders that ship with it. So for example, if you wanted to create a tune shader, we could open that one up. There's a tune shader available right here. And there you go. Uh, right mouse button to orbit, middle mouse button to zoom in and out. Uh, and there are a number of different shader options out there. So go back over here for a second and we'll go examples and we'll go into shader toy. So that is where that one came from. So that was drive home. This is a new feature that was just added in the most recent version. This is audio stuff, a bit of a warning. You're about to get blitzed with some audio. So I'll turn your speakers down if it comes down to it, but you will see here, it is a visualization shader with music playing in the background. If I go over to objects, you can see there is the music that is being fed in. And again, we can access the shader clicking here. Here is the code that is controlling this shader that you are seeing in action. So if you're looking for a tool for experimenting with or learning shaders, this might just be the tool, especially if you are not working with something that abstracts the shader away like Godot or Unity or Unreal Engine. If you're working more at the raw shader level or if you wanna say download a shader from a shader toy like this one is and get to work on it, that is uh, exactly what this tool is all about. So that was a bit of a hands-on with Shader Ed. Now let's go into a little bit of the details about it. First off, it is available on GitHub. I will obviously link this in the link down below from DFrankX. Uh, it is under the MIT code license. If you don't know your open source licenses, MIT is about as liberal as they get. You can do whatever the hell you want, just don't sue them, basically. And you, your limited responsibilities, or like resolve them of their responsibility. So if it accidentally formats your computer, tough luck. Uh, but you know, don't expect that to happen. As you can see, the code here is C or C++. Um, now let's get into a little bit of the description. Shader Ed is a lightweight tool for creating and testing HLSL and GLSL. So that's basically Direct3D and uh, OpenGL. Now, one thing to be aware of is that HLSL part. This is unfortunately right now a Windows only tool because it is built on top of Direct3D. However, there is a lack of commits coming to the repo in the next couple of weeks. I am working on an OpenGL port. I have to imagine once it is ported to OpenGL, uh, it can run on more platforms. So that's probably when you will see a Linux or a Mac OS binary, at least the option of porting the code over. So that is a thing in action. Um, so you see, you code up your changes, you can compile it, run it on the fly, and there you see the end results. Um, you can have it automatically recompile shaders, which I think I actually had enabled by default. Uh, you get code completion as you are typing your shader code in, which is also very cool. Um, 
You can interact with them directly in the scene. Uh, geometry shaders are available. Render states are available. Audio files, we just saw that. That's a new feature they had in there. You can load in uh, object files, which are a static mesh format, very common, but everything else is supported. Plus they have built-in geometry, including cubes, spheres, planes, full screen quads, the teapot, etc. cetera. Uh, texture support can be brought in. Uh, actually, I actually didn't open up a texture. I guess I should have. So you can bring in and, and configure your textures that are passed in. You can have shader input variables that you define and set the values of accordingly. So you can pass these values into your shader so you can figure it and see it with different results. We can get shader stats displayed. Um, the code editor has a built-in code editor. Code editor is a very basic version of code predictions. It is smart predictions will be updated and improved over time. It also has a very basic version of auto completion and automatic indenting. Uh, you are not forced to use the built-in one. You can use your favorite of choice. We got error marking. So if it um, your, your code doesn't compile, you'll get the line of code and the error message that goes with that code. There is custom theming support. Uh, a little bit of work involved behind that. And that's about it. So on top of that, we've got, so supporting this, it is patron and PayPal backed, but it is a completely free open source MIT licensed project, which is quite awesome. So here are some of the things that they're working on in the future. More 3D model formats, custom sampler states, multiple cameras, shader variable pointers, shader flags, uh, export as DirectX OpenGL application.cpp file, uh, tessellation, render your shader to a video file, support includes macros, buffer read from file or um, using in-app buffer editor, magnifier tool and pixel inspector, text uh, geometry, uh, and then planning to do all these small and smaller quality of life changes. And then you see there are binaries available right here. Go to the release page and you will find them there. Unfortunately, again, it is Windows only. Now I'm putting words in the author's mouth. I don't know that that OpenGL port is so that it could support multiple platforms. It's quite pot. Nah, there's no way it supports multiple platforms if it's built around DirectX. Uh, but it, it could be that when the OpenGL port is done, uh, people will be able to port this to various different platforms. And of course, on top of that, it is an open source MIT licensed project. So if you want to bring it to Linux or um, Mac OS or whatever, hey, it's there for you. It's using a an open source, I think it's, uh, what was that? I am GUI. Um, it said right here. Yeah, it's using I am GUI for its uh, UI layer. So it, in theory, it should be uh, portable on that level. So it's really just that back end direct 3D dependency that's going to cause an issue there. So especially if you are on a Windows platform and you were looking for a shader editor, you could do really well by checking out shader ed. Again, I will toss all the links down below. Uh, let me know what you think. I actually showcased a couple tools like this that were commercial. So it's awesome to see something this polished and capable that is also completely free. So if you want to check it out, um, this the links are all down below and uh, let me know what you think are you using a different GLSL shader or HLSL shader editor if so what are you using uh, is, there, is that direct 3D thing kind of a turn off for you do you care uh, let me know all these things comments down below and I will talk to you all later it's just it's simply amazing just how many of these free tools we have these days isn't it all right that's it goodbye <laughs>